Okay, really good question. I'm going to save and let's continue on. Let's copy and paste, bring it down, and let's start the, the next part of our code, which is instead of just creating a row of points, right, we want to be able to create a grid of points, right? So points in two directions. So once we have a single loop uh, created, if we open up the editor here, if we've created a single loop to step through i, we can replicate some of the same structure so that we can loop through j. If we have a second loop, it will allow us to use our counter to define a point uh, coordinate in the y direction. Right. So um, after the first for loop, let's add in some pseudocode. We're going to create a loop to step through J. Right. And J is going to be our second counter. And after that, um, we're going to be creating a point not at i comma zero comma zero, but i j zero. And those are the only modifications we need to we need to define. So once we start to create our for loop for j, let's go ahead and do that for j in range open parentheses zero comma. Are we going to use x or do we want another input, right? Well, for now, we don't have another input. Um, so let's say that we're going to keep going with the letter scheme that we have here. So x, instead of x, we're going to say y. We need to make sure that we go back and change the grasshopper object to include a second input, right? So remember, y is going to have to become a new input down here. And um, once we hit return or enter, notice how we've now indented a second level. So now this is at the level tab, tab. So anything at this indention will happen inside the J loop, right? So what we need to do is all the stuff here, which is going to happen every time we go through J as well, we need to select it and hit tab so that it moves over to the correct level, right? So this is just some empty space for j in range 0 to y. We're going to create a point at ij. So that means we need to adjust our coordinate value here, i comma j. We're still going to include the current point in the output, and that should be it. So if I hit test, <laughs> it says name y is not defined. Right? That's as expected. We need to go into the grasshopper object and make sure that there is a Y input. So I'm going to hit OK. Remember I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to hit the plus sign, right? So it already named it Y, but if I needed to change it, I could right click and type the name here, right? I need a second slider, right, here for Y. And I also need to make sure that I specify what type it is, right? Again, if I put my mouse over it, it gives me a hint. It says that right now it is, uh, the type hint is defined as just generically an object, right? So we need to go in and right click Y, say the type hint should be integer, and now everything is working as expected. Our sliders will define how many points we have in the X, how many points in the Y, etc. Okay, so we've now created our grid of points. Um, let's take a minute to discuss a little bit more about what we see here, right? In the same way that we are using our groups so that we can label things, right? We probably want to get into um, a habit of making sure that these things are clearly labeled or that these names, what we're calling X, Y, and A, are a little bit more uh, specific, right? So um, let's zoom in. And the first slider, let's change the name. This is going to be 
num x, right? The number of points in the x direction. Similarly, we're going to say that the slider, the second slider is going to be num y. Okay. So um, you probably also want those same labels to define the values here, right? X and Y. Um, so you have you have the option to modify them, but remember, inside of the object here, these va variables X and Y are being drawn from these two inputs. So if I were to change this, let's go ahead and see what happens here. I want this to be clearly visible to myself when I use this again, or uh, my friend, or collaborator, or partner, right? And say that this is going to be num x. I've now changed the name here, and this no longer successfully defines how many points there are in the x direction. Right? So if I make any changes here, this name needs to be coordinated with wherever I'm using it. In this case, I'm only using it once. So this is num, this needs to be redefined as num x. And if I did that modification, it will then work again. So you always have to be careful of not only what this is labeled as, what the name is, but also what type it is. Remember that you have to set the type hint. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be num y. That means I need to go in here and make this modification as well. Remember, case sensitive as well, num capital X. That means that that's how I have to type it here. Hit OK. And now this is um, pretty well defined as an object, right? Same goes for the outputs. If you want to change what this is called, right, labeled on the outside, you have to change that here and here, all right? Okay. Um, so the key here is that um, we've successfully created our grid of points. We used counters, i and j, and looping structures to execute the action of creating the point. And we talked a lot about uh, making sure that our names are coordinated inside and outside. Um, so there was a question about um, how to define this inside of the object, and we're going to get there in just a second. All right, so if there are any other questions about this file, about creating the grid of points, uh, let's address those now. Go ahead and drop them into the questions window. Okay. So one question was, is there a difference between open parentheses and open brackets? And the answer is absolutely. This is very strict in any programming language that you use. Brackets, uh, which are next to, if you're in an uh, English keyboard, they're next to P, right? Parentheses, which are above 9 and 0. These are uh, very different symbols um, in, in that uh, the Python language will understand those as very different things. Right? Same goes for quotes versus apostrophe. All of those are different in terms of what you're asking uh, Python to do with those symbols. Right? In this case, we're using the brackets to say that this needs to be able to store multiple items. But everywhere else where we're using the parentheses, these are defining the uh, start and end of a set of inputs for a method, right? Like range is a method. Add points is a method, but that falls under the Rhino script syntax. Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, there's another question about append, and um, let's save those uh, that question for the very next file, because uh, that's when we're going to talk about it. Uh, more in depth. Um, but again, just to recap what we're doing with append is we're just adding it to the uh, output in this case. We're saying that my point, the current point that we just created, is going to be included in the A output. All right. Great questions. Uh, let's carry on. 